Let's start with your earnings and the stock reaction. You know, the stock was up this morning on your beat for the quarter. What's turned it around? What feedback are you hearing from investors? Good to see you, Meg. Well, um, I really don't know. Uh, I haven't heard anything from the investors yet, so I don't know why there was initially a positive and then a negative reaction. So we got to ask them, but uh, it, uh, right now I have no information on what they're thinking. <laughs> One thing I'm hearing from the investor community is about cash flow. Uh, do you think that you know what you said on the call in terms of cash flow perhaps being under expectations might be contributing a little bit to the disappointment there? I wouldn't think so because we really had a good strong cash flow last year of more than two billion, and we are predicting this year also a strong cash flow of more than two billion. And as you know, we are sticking to our target for the end of 23 of having you know net debt reduction so that we will have a ratio between net debt and EBITDA below three times. So um, I think we have a very solid development on our debt. We've reduced it by $10 billion over the last three years. So uh, we continue to drive down debt. Well, one very bright spot uh, in Teva's business and really just for the world is Teva's involvement in the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine in Israel. You're Israel's partner there for the distribution and the logistics. And Israel has administered more doses per capita than any other country. And granted, it is a small country uh, with a centralized healthcare system. But, you know, tell us about what the fact that so many Israelis and 80 percent of people over 65 you know, has meant for the, you know, optimism around the economy there, how you're thinking about a major business operating in Israel. Yeah, so we're very proud to be the partners taking care of all the logistics with the vaccines in Israel. So we pick them up in the airport, take them to our big logistics center, and then uh, we sort of uh, change the packs so that the pack sizes matches the needs in any of the 400 400 vaccination centers around Israel, and then we, we make sure that the right quantity gets to the right center at the right time. So this has been an extremely exciting time in Israel. Now, in terms of uh, the future, then, of course, it's difficult to predict exactly when enough people have been vaccinated to really drive down the number of uh, cases and the number of deaths. But I would expect that over the next two months, you will see a significant improvement in the situation in Israel due to the very, very high levels of vaccination. There is, of course, the ethical and practical question, what happens to people who are not volunteering to be vaccinated? Uh, that's a residual risk in society, of course, if not everybody gets vaccinated. Hmm. How are you looking at that as the leader of a major company that makes you know, products that are essential for people, medicines? Would you mandate that your employees get the COVID-19 vaccine? I would strongly recommend it. I don't think I would mandate it. I don't think force is the way sort of to, to get people to understand that it's really beneficial for all of us, for all of society, if everybody gets vaccinated. You get by far the biggest effect of vaccinations if everybody gets them. And you could say not getting it is really not showing a lot of solidarity with the people at risk in the rest of the population. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.